Hi, welcome back to our shop. Today we have a teardown video. When I bought my milling machine, I also ordered a rotary table. It's a uh, Chinese or Chinese made uh, vertex rotary table and so far I'm pretty happy with it but I want to take it apart to see if the insides are any good and also to clean out any dirt that's, um, that's inside there. With all the Chinese stuff you always have the problem that when they manufacture it, they grind it, they do machining operations on it, but uh, often they don't clean out the chips and the grinding dust. And that can cause uh, wear, very very fast wear on your um, tooling. So let's go to the bench and take it apart. And okay, there we go. This is a... Uh, 150 millimeter rotary table that can double as a dividing head. You can pull off the um, hand crank here and set up a uh, dividing disc and uh, the divider pin to do um, gear cutting and stuff like that but I don't have this accessory for it yet uh, maybe I will make it myself but it's not that expensive so maybe I just buy it um, of course it's a worm driven rotary table And the nice thing is you can disengage the, the worm and spin it freely um, to do quick positioning and also when you're centering up work pieces on the rotary table. Um, this is way faster than cranking the, the worm. You can use it in, the, in a flat configuration on the table like this and you can also stand it up on the machine um, when you do shafting. Oh yeah, um, this is branded Optimum because this is the um, the tool trading house I bought the machine and this rotary table from but this is a vertex rotary table. I will link to the vertex page down in the description. Also the rotary table this is I especially chosen this one because it has four T-slots and it has also the Morse Taper 2 socket in center uh, which I use quite a lot. These are the locks for the table and the table itself is graduated at its circumflex. It's a pretty good engraving. It looks like a laser engraving. Yeah, this seems to be laser engraved. Um, okay, let's see how we take this apart. Um, first of all, we need to get out these locks, which are screwed in. We will use the Nipex pliers and some copper sh uh, copper shim stock to protect them when I unscrew them. So we don't put any apprentice marks on there. And to make it easier to put back together, one, one, one. Because I don't want to have to fiddle around to see which one is which one. Um, this matters because of the orientation of the handles. I'm sure they drill the holes freehand after they assemble the whole table. This is, these are the locking pieces. Uh, this is just a stepped block which engages the slot and the circumflex of this table. <coughs> Do the other one. Okay, I'll 
that was the second one. Now we can flip it around and oh, and undo this plate, this uh, retaining plate. There are four screws which hold this plate on and four set screws to adjust the plate. Um, this is not the greatest uh, design, but it works. Oh crap! Okay. Oh yeah, they... <laughs> they tighten these screws down like... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow, they tightened down the screws like there is no tomorrow. I will have to replace these as I, mm, yeah, kind of stripped out the heads right now. I have the strange feeling that, I, that they tightened these screws with an impact. Okay, these are the screws. This is the retaining plate. Goes out like this. And yes, I looked at an exploded view of this thing. I need to take out the worm. This is the set screw for the disengagement mechanism. Just screw it out. There is a set screw over here with uh, which we will unscrew. step by step one take off the hand wheel okay there we go I removed the ring on here which is just hold in place with two set screws and now we can take apart this uh, this center uh, drive thing here oh yeah they cranked down all the screws like crazy <laughs> Just loosen them, get in with a longer Allen wrench, T-handled. Okay, now we should be able yeah, to take off this ring, which also has four set screws for adjustment on its circumflex here, here, here and here are four set screws to adjust for any imperfection in the machining they do. It's not a very elegant solution, but it's a, uh, or it is an elegant solution, but it's not the technical most um, refined way. And now we can just pull out the, the worm, which looks at first glance Pretty good. The whole faceplate, yeah, there we go. Be careful. Okay, there we go. Oh, that's, uh, oh, that looks pretty good. Okay, this is the main housing of the rotary table and this is the This is the bearing surface and it was lubricated and there is not much dirt on it and also it's it's machined it's by the look of it it's surface surface ground in that direction um, and it doesn't really look bad it's 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 well machined there is an oil groove in it I would prefer if the oil groove would be off-center, but still should be good enough. And there is not very much dirt in there. There is some some dirt in the in the oil groove, but apart from that it looks not shabby. I'm happy. And this is the main um, radial bearing, which takes all the side thrust. 
and this looks like it's bored. Overall, I'm, I'm pretty happy how this looks. Um, I'm just cleaning out some of the gunk in there. Now we'll take a look at the... This is the bore where the, um, where the warm drive assembly sits in. And the warm is only... Um, there is only a bearing surface on this side. It's um, unsupported at the other side. But this board diameter here, let's get some light in there, is also machined. Pretty nice, a pretty good surface finish and I'm happy. <laughs> so far I'm, I'm quite surprised how good it's made. Um, the, the big axial surface here, um, thrust bearing is, is nicely made. The bore here is only machined but it's it has a quite good finish and this this uh, bore for the for the warm drive is also uh, made pretty good. There are oil spots in there and um, these are the crappy ones which will lose their ball after a few uses. Um, it's a good idea to replace those with some proper ones. Speaking of oilers, these are pretty high quality ones. They are machined from brass and they have a, a nice touches that they have a red ball which indicates a lubrication point so you can see at a first glance where to lubricate a machine or a tool. Um, I used these on my lathe when I rebuilt it and those work very great and they have a, a nice um, they're just a nice touch and we might replace this one and also the other ones that go into the rotary table itself because um, I don't want to take this apart anytime soon again and the ball of this one will go will jump out sooner or later these are pretty crappy and I will show you how to get out these it's pretty simple there are a few techniques to do it okay here we have the rotary table itself with the faceplate with the four T-slots in it and on the back side we have the important parts and what they did here is yeah they machined the oil grooves off center and that's how you do it so the whole surface gets lubricated when you turn it that's that's well done that's a nice touch The warm gear itself looks like it's machined from cast iron. Um, this is screwed onto the faceplate. I will not undo the screws because I'm not in the mood to align everything back together. And I, and I don't see any means of aligning this. Maybe this is registered against this boss in there, but still, <laughs> nope, not going to take this apart. And this is the central um, spigot, which um, the central axis, which uh, turns in the bearing and takes the side thrust. And this is also a spiral groove for the lubricant machined into it. Also nice, nicely done. And the surface is only. This looks like it's turned. And this. This axial face, uh, I'm not sure, might be ground. Nope, there are um, radial machining marks, so this is turned or faced on a leaf. Um, yeah, let's take a closer look at the um, warm gear or warm, yeah, warm gear. Okay, I cleaned out the grease from some of the um, gear teeth and when we take a closer look at the machining marks, this gear is, 
yeah, it's it's obviously it's milled with a um, with a hop hop milled as there is the um, uh, the lead out from the from the milling cutter up here which uh, disengages the cut um, the surface of the gear teeth is pretty good and um, overall I'm, I'm it's it's not very badly made it's it's pretty nice gear it has an adequate diameter the only thing I don't like is the cast iron as a material but apart from that I'm very happy and here we can see the imprint from the set screws to set the axial play of the rotary tail which is yeah you can do it like that but not the best solution okay this is the warm assembly itself and we have a we have um, the eccentric bushing here which allows to engage and disengage the worm from the worm gear and we have the worm up here which is this is super nicely made I will bring the camera in a bit closer so you can see this worm is super nicely made it's it's ground and the best thing is if I take my needle file to a minor surface which we don't mind up here Do you hear this? This is hardened. So the worm is hardened and ground. And I'm not sure what happened here. Maybe they only induction hardened the end here or they welded, they friction welded the worm onto the shaft. But I think they machined it as a whole. And then they just hardened the worm in front here by induction hardening. Not sure, um, but this looks like it's one piece. So um, my bets are off for um, induction hardening the worm. And the whole worm shaft, I will not take it out. Oh, why not? Let's take it out. The worm drive is secured by this nut up here which is held in place by two set screws and we have to get out this um, this key and what I prefer to do with keys I use a wise uh, in this case it's a grinding wise because this is my drill press wise and I like to grab the key and just pull it out um, beats mucking them up with wise grips or channel locks is a bit more professional and now we can unscrew this nut yeah I'm, I'm using the the Allen wrench as a as a as a lever to turn this and unscrew this nut this is the nut with the two set screws what I don't like is that the set screws directly press against the thread here then we have a thin um, wafer spring. I guess it's to take out any um, axle play in the warm drive. Nice touch. And then we can pull out the ooh, <laughs> the um, the spindle, the warm, the whole warm drive spindle. And same here. same heat marks here like here on the spindle and my guess is yeah the, the bearings bearing surfaces here are also hardened and they are ground and they even went through the trouble and machined in a spiral oil groove in both of the bearing surfaces very nice that's how you do it um, and this is just a plain piece of this is just machine by the looks of it um, this is cast iron and we can yeah there we can take a look in it and it's pretty nicely machined on the inside 
might be bored or reamed. Um, and hardened ground steel on cast iron. It's a good it's it's a good material combination. It will not seize or gall and it will last a pretty long time if it's lubricated. If you don't lubricate it, uh, yeah, good luck. But so far I'm pretty happy with this. Um, the parts are very nicely made and my battery is just dying. <laughs> Oh, and by the way, I breached the 5,000 subscriber mark. Thank you all for this. And as a small special for the 5,000, I was thinking of doing a Q&A episode where I just answer random questions for maybe half an hour. Just drop your question down in the comments and Maybe I will pick them and answer them. Might be fun. Let's see if it works out. Um, you can ask anything personal, technical, about what I do for a living and so on and so on. Just uh, <laughs> drop it down in the comments and I will sort through them, pick a few and answer them. Maybe. And back to normal program. Oh, by the way, thank you. Okay, let's um, let's replace the oil point here, and also the two oilers on the faceplate. One goes in here to lubricate the face bearing surface, and the one here which uh, lubricates the the uh, central boss here. We will replace them with these uh, high quality oil points. Um, these have a 6mm base diameter, so I choose a drill about 5mm. And uh, be careful, this, the drill will catch when, when you enter it, and uh, so don't go with 5000 RPM onto it. Just. Okay, and these, this one is a tough one. <laughs> okay, there is the spring, there is the ball. <laughs> Crap. Um, this is the showcase effect. Normally they, start, they catch on the drill and start to spin. Uh, we have to drill that out completely. This is a 5.8 millimeter drill. Oops. Normally we should be able to pick it out right now. We will take a small prick punch and now we can uh, just uh, drive it through. There we go. Um, normally they come out as one piece. Okay, now to cut out this and this oiler. This one is easy. Uh, we can just use a, a thin punch and knock it out from the back side. There we go. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was easy to knock out the ball. But not the. We have to pull out that too. And there is another trick we can use. Uh, we will shred it and pull it out. We can get in with a 5mm tap. Uh -huh. 
Okay, this is easy. Uh, two nuts, six millimeter nuts, a fender washer, and a five millimeter screw. And then we will just crank down on it until it pulls out the oiler. Should come out right now. There we go. That's the more elegant solution to pull it out um, instead of hammering and banging on it with a punch. And yes, these are quarter inch. Of course I don't have quarter inch oilers, but I have Loctite. And this goes in also very nice. But before we glue them in, we will first uh, pull out this one. And this time we will directly start with a uh, with the correct drill for this for a M5 thread. Of course, you have to get out the ball. And pull it out the same technique as before. Oops. With the screw and the fender washer. And two nuts. This is nuts. Okay, and here you can see how the, the screw pulls out the oiler. There we go. And due to the magics of video editing, the rotary table is back together without a problem. Um, on these type of rotary table, you can adjust the uh, backlash in the worm by changing the engagement of the worm. And there is a uh, a set screw on the side of these rotary tables where you can adjust this and you go in with an with an Allen wrench and then you get your um, you can set your engagement and by that you can set the uh, backlash and I will And I will exaggerate the backlash right now. This is with a lot of backlash. Um, with the worm engaged, that's about yeah, maybe half a millimeter of backlash on the circumflex of this rotary table. And that's way too much. On a rotary table, I like a very, very little backlash. I don't mind backlash on a milling machine table, don't mind it, but on a rotary table, it really sucks. And because we don't want to guess, we want to actually measure it. We'll set up our dial test indicator against the T slot. Okay, we start at zero and we get about three thirty five hundreds of thirty five hundreds millimeter backlash. That's quite a bit and way too much for my liking. We will adjust it. Um, we'll turn. You have to retract the the set screw in here so the worm engages 
the worn gear more, and then you can do this test again. Zero it again. And we're down to 22 hundredths of a millimeter. That's still a bit much. Let's go a bit further. That's one tenth of a millimeter backlash. Yeah, you could set the backlash also by feel, but um, for me it's easier when I see what I'm doing. There we go, that's uh, one hundredth of a, or two hundredths of a millimeter backlash on a diameter of on a diameter of 140 millimeters or on a radii of 70 millimeter. Um, you can calculate how much um, that is as an angle. I will not. Um, and now we have to check if we can still crank it, hand crank it. And that's still very smooth turning. And uh, doesn't f maybe we can even get a bit tighter. Let's go in again. Zero this, loosen this screw, and give it a, a bit more. Now we have practically no backlash. Let's see if we can still turn it. And it doesn't feel different to, uh, to the last setting, so we will keep this. This is a good setting. Um, this should be good enough to do even climb milling. At least light cuts. Um, Climb milling on a conventional machine is always a bit. Uh, you have to know what you're doing. But right now, yeah, there is effectively no backlash. Um, when I turn, when I change the direction on the hand wheel, the the um, the table turns instantly, instantaneous. Um, that's how I like it. Um, yeah. Now we know how the guts of this rotary table look. And that it's pretty good, well made. And that it's worth its money in my mind. Um, and this size is also um, perfectly to set up one of my grinding vices on it. If I have to do a lot of angled cuts in different directions, um, I can clamp it down with four small strap clamps and rip, uh, I'm ready to go. Only thing I need for it is a tailstock. I don't have a tailstock for this one when I'm using it in. Uh, in this configuration. That might be a build video some someday in future, even if they are very cheap to get, but I don't like the design of those who are sold. So verdict on the Vertex 150mm rotary table. Thank you for watching.